Well, of course, everybody knows about feeding the girls sugar, because that's pretty standard. But at the minute, we've got our own drama going on, because the girls have found some nectar on the bloomin' red mallee down the scrub, but there's very limited pollen supply. So I've been looking into this whole project, and of course, everybody knows about pollen patties. But here at the Bush Bee Man, who's always pressed for time, thought he might just make some feeders and feed it to them dry out in the open. There's a bit of controversy, of course, about dry feeding and open feeding, and of course, that the weaker colony won't get as much pollen as the stronger colony. But of course, if you're a stronger colony, you've got more mouths to feed, so one would assume you'd need more. Anyway, that's my opinion of it all, so we'll see what happens. So at the minute, we're buying some, what are we buying? Custom bee feed that's coming in these plastic pots. I think you can get it in a bag as well, but at the moment I thought, well, the little buckets are kind of cool, I'll turn them into the feeders. So, it's a bit of a bloody rough idea, so I've got a, got a pail that the food comes in, I've got a catching bucket. I don't know, it looks like the thing you usually wash your dishes up when you went camping in, actually. Well, maybe it's a Devo lid. Well, no, they had pointy hats, didn't they? Cool, so my poor unfortunate little bloody hole saw. I think they're about seven bucks at the hardware shop, so. But they kind of work good for this. This is a bit of dag ass, and I suppose if I wreck it, it will lose it, or whatever else, it won't matter. Anyway, the idea is we're gonna drill some holes around the bottom of our bucket, so the ladies can just get in there and get hold of this bee feed. Because I've found if you actually put it in a tray out in the open, they end up with this little crust and they can't bloom and get to the food that they want. But if you have it in a bucket, there's some holes and they can sort of eat up underneath. And all the big bits fall into this. That's my, yeah, that's the idea of catching it. So we'll stick this together. I think I've adapted this, adopted this drill now. It's all good. Right, now one little trick. You don't want to drill a hole directly below here because it's going to be a problem later on. So we're going to we're going to do it into quarters. Yes, quarters. I don't know, can you have a quarter of a round? I guess you can have a quarter of a circle. But anyway, we just want to drill some holes in the bottom here. Not, not through the bottom, but towards the bottom. Help. It's a real sharp drill, isn't it? Don't, what have I done to that? Yeah, what did I do? Ah, come on, bush bee man. Go. Ta-da! You don't want, you don't need too many holes. about four in the four in the gap will work. Like I see, because we're gonna put a strap here in a minute, so we don't want to put it there. Because I did one like that and it was a blooming pain. Because I think it was prototype three, I think I drilled too many holes in my bucket. So anyway, you get along and get better at this sort of bodging up crap as you go, I guess. I don't think I've done that cheap ass drill any good. <laughs> Make a mess in your shed, isn't it? <laughs> I reckon that's plenty. One there. This is not very, it's not very organised. Maybe we'll put one more in there. Just get me trusty cleaning up knife. I'm not really sure where that came from, but anyway, let's not ask too many questions. That's probably a good idea. Seems pretty good. And then we'll just do the inside. Get rid of these little bits of extra plastic. So that's not going to go for me. Maybe we'll have to go this way. Not that it's really going to matter, but I just like to make it a bit clean. I guess if you had a fancy hole saw, you probably wouldn't have to clean shit up like that. I don't know. I've never had a fancy hole saw. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> of course, you can make your own bee feed. I mean, it's pretty much just soy flour and other proteins mixed together. And I've done a bit of that, but goodness gracious. Actually, getting the girls to like it is a bit interesting. But if you put a bit of crush up a bit of vitamin C, put it in the in with the mix, that seems to attract them a bit. But anyway, at the minute I'm just buying it already made because you know there's only so many things a bloke can fit into a lifetime. So that's that little bit, and then all we're going to do is figure out a way to hang that pot up there so as when we hang it in the tree, it's all swinging in the breeze. I have just the thing. <laughs> Here we go. 
got me old bloody barbecue as my um, dispenser. I've got me roll hanging on the handle back here. Anyway, this is what we, this is waste not, what not. I've got this laying around. I suppose you could, well, you know, I'm sure you could use whatever the hell you like, but this works for me. Plus it's here. So, oh, what's it? Availability is, is probably the most important thing around this farm. So, I reckon we'll do these two off the handle for a start. Of course, in my extremely tidy bloody workbench. I'm just wondering what the hell I did with the drill that was the right size. God, I wonder if that'll be any good. Oh, it should be. That'll have to do. Shit, I don't know. Now, one important thing to remember, I have learnt along my journey of life, when you've got a cheap ass hole saw with all these different size bits and pieces, put the bloody thing back together. Even though it's very frustrating, put it back together every time you use it. Now, there's something you wouldn't think would happen from me, but it won't be very long down the road and this bit will be over there and that bit will be over here and you won't have to. And then you go down the shop and spend another seven dollars and get another bloody one. So put the thing back together and even if you don't put it away like my father-in-law would like me to do and just throw it back on your bench, at least if it's all in the one thing, you only have to find one item, not bloody ten or seven or whatever the fucking is. So there's a piece of advice that you never thought would come out of my mouth, I'll bet you. Then of course you've got to put it away in its designated storing position, which in my workshop is about there. Okie okay, okay, okay. So, now, what we want to do, we're going to put the strap down the side of the bucket. Something like that. That'll do, that's plenty long. Now this is a bit interesting trying to drill this crap. So you know what I normally try to do is just jet the hole through here, because it obviously it's going to go whoosh, around your drill if you're not careful. I'm not sure if that's a technical term, whoosh, but it's there. <laughs> the reason I decided to use gutter bolts and not just be a slack ass and just get some tech screws and go Pah! is because I didn't want all the pointy bits inside the bucket. Didn't want all the pointy little tips. I suppose you could get all excited and angle grind off the tip of the jolly thing, but anyway, this is what I decided to do, so feel free to improvise. I'm sure you will. <laughs> if you're wondering why I have to rub it up and down a little bit, it's because my drill's not quite the right size. So, oh, I just have to enlarge the hole just a touch. So that's one on that side, and then you want one here, and then you want to find out where the, I guess the middle between that. So you want four straps ultimately. And then we're going to put it to that pot in a minute. That's my plan anyway. So you just want to get them evenly spaced around your bucket. Which I think I've still drilled the holes in the slightly wrong spot, but anyway, it won't matter. many eyes though. Anyway, the idea is we're going to put it in this to catch the crumbs. The theory is that it goes in here and then that dangles above it. So you just want to get that. So basically it's going to be sitting about there. I reckon if we put a little text mark on that. Once we put it on the side to drill the hole, we'll be in all sorts of strife. Now if you've actually gone down and you've got this, don't get too carried away because this is fairly brittle plastic and it will split on you. So you just be a bit be a bit patient with it. Especially if you've got a super sharp drill like mine. <laughs> cool, so we'll just wriggle a little bit through there so we can get our hole in that. So then we're gonna put a, our little box through our holes. Strip them there, through there. Hopefully I don't run out of bolts here. I think I might just have the right amount, which will be good. 
Otherwise the cameraman would be most annoyed if we have to go for a drive to the shop and then come back to put the last few in. I'm pretty sure they didn't have this in mind but then they made this plastic container, didn't they? And then we just want to get the other side kind of even. It is kind of even. Is that kind of even? Does that look even to you? <laughs> Not that it bloody matters a whole lot anyway, but I want it to. I want it to be a bit aesthetically pleasing. Anyway, that's a little bit of a rough little design. Heck, hang on, what have I done? <laughs> I thought I'd wrecked it. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna hang, that's so I can hang that in the tree. And the ladies can come in here and go and have a little bit of feed. Cause that's only if they need some pollen. Like, and of course then you could have a, I guess I was just thinking now, I guess I could actually have this container if I got really motivated. I could actually bloom and put my sugar water in there with some what are they called? Corks. And then the ladies could go in there and they could actually deep the sugar water in a tree. Maybe I'll try that as well another day. But anyway, today that's not what we're doing. Because today they've actually got they've actually got some nectar, they just really find it hard to get the pollen. So and pollen, of course, as you know, is their protein. So, you know, they're out having a coat, but they need some chips to go with it, otherwise they get bored. At least the weather's a bit more respectable. Anyway, I was just, there's only a little few little reconnaissance bees that we brought down earlier and I thought I'd just show you where my feeder idea started because I was down here trying to give these ladies a bit of blooming pollen substitute and the only thing I had in my car was an old flower pot. So as you can see, they're in here and they're digging, digging away at their feed. And I'll show you, see how they, they get up here and they can get all the fine stuff and then they end up with this heavier gear that they can't carry off. So that's what my thought was, if they could butter it up underneath, the heavy stuff will fall out. However, that was my emergency introduction to this idea. Of course, I bloody had it sitting on some sticks so they could get in there and they seem to like it. So we'll just go and get our bucket feeder out of the ute and a bit of string and we'll hang it in the tree over here and then let the girls get reorientated. Pull that rubber band out of there for them. <laughs> That's our orange tree bees. Oh, oh crap. We'll have a new bucket soon. So we'll take that one. So this is our fancy new feeder. Which might be a bit flashier than my flower pot, one would hope. <laughs> Mind you, I don't think the girls would really give a shit, would they? <laughs> as long as they get fed. A little bit of hanging up going on. I think that looks like a pretty good height to me. Let's tie that around there like that. There, we go. Yeah, there looks pretty good. We've got a bit of height and we also can get at it. Anyway, we'll leave a bit of string here so it's adjustable. Oop. So we might as well use that and tip it in here and move them away from that container in the pot and they can figure that out. Then we'll tip this in our new feeder. Not completely ideal, but it works. <laughs> so the plan is that this is a sort of an upgraded flower pot. So then the ladies come here and they scratch along and they can actually, as they're scratching their, then the, all the core stuff drops into our catcher. I don't really know whether, I, I tried mixing some of it up, so we'll go and have a look and see how that got on. And maybe, I mean, of course you can put your patties in your hives and all the rest of it, but anyway, this is a bit of a community, community feeding. They could all come out and have a little bit of a community party. 
and if it rains of course the lid's going to keep it dry in there and it's only going to get what's wet in here I got all excited with the first one I made and drilled holes in the bottom so as it could drain out but anyway it didn't bloody matter because the, the this stuff the, the feed got stuck in the holes and bloody made it stick there anyway so I figure oh well I don't bother drilling holes anymore but maybe you should have one big hole in the middle or something but then I figure all the stuff will fall onto the ground and then the catching things kind of pointless anyway we'll find out when we get to winter So this is my first model, as you can see, I didn't get the thing quite square with my straps, but anyway, the principle's the same. I mean, there's about three or four days ago, we had this about uh, more than half full, and how they've churned through that, uh, looking for this stuff like you wouldn't believe. The interesting thing about feeding bees to substitute pollen, apparently back in the day, this all started because the woman, if you, had, if you were a beekeeper and you actually had to be near a dairy farm, the bees used to go and steal all the feed off the blooming the, the soy powders and the chaff and shit that they were feeding the cows. So that was where this whole concept came from. They're bloody clever, aren't they? So at least this way you don't have to get suited up when you feed your bees. As long as we don't crash anybody. <laughs> we're not going to give them this whole bucket full because this is my last bucket, so... <laughs> I'm going to have to order some more. They're definitely enjoying this idea. Anyway... If we hang around for a little bit, you'll be surprised what you see in a minute. <laughs> 